What is up meal prepping family? I am crazy excited about today's recipe because we are gonna make five completely different meal prep recipes for the week using 10 fresh ingredients. Today's recipes are gonna cover breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's so versatile and so easy, but there's one thing we always do in this kitchen. We bring the flavor. So meal prepping masterclass is in session. First up, we're making an Asian noodle and veggie chicken stir fry. Low carb noodles and veggies cooked together and topped with grilled chicken. Next up, we're making a veggie and kale breakfast frittata. Then we're gonna make a kale and parsley low carb pesto pasta with chicken, followed by my famous lunch salad, kale, veggies, nuts, and grilled chicken thighs. And last up, we're making shakshuka, a Middle Eastern tomato, egg, and veggie casserole. The 10 ingredients I chose for today's meal preps are boneless, skinless chicken thighs, low carb shirataki noodles, garlic, onions, eggs, kale, red peppers, parsley, French green beans or hairy couvert, and tomatoes. All right, for the stir fry, let's get started with the chicken. I have a platter of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm gonna cook all the thighs I need for all the recipes today but I'm gonna make a spice rub that goes well with every recipe too. Because if you're new to my channel, we love spice rubs that add insane flavor to any recipe without adding additional fat. So this one starts with a teaspoon of smoked paprika, a teaspoon of ground cumin, and a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Pinch over a generous amount of salt and then half of the spice rub. Flip the chicken over, do a little more salt and the rest of the spice rub, and then massage that rub all into the chicken. I just washed my hand and I'm gonna preheat my cast iron pan over medium high heat, which takes us to this week's trivia. When cooking chicken, do you want it to be cold from the fridge when it hits the pan or do you want it to be room temperature? Leave a comment below with the answer. In the meantime, I'm taking a neutral oil like avocado or grapeseed. I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons to my cast iron. And then once the oil goes in, wait 30 seconds, give that a chance to heat up and then I'll add the chicken thighs. That's the sound you wanna hear. Push the chicken down when it goes in the pan so it's making maximum contact. Splatter guard those down. And remember, this chicken is gonna be used for a bunch of the recipes today, so it's very versatile. And if you wanted to use boneless, skinless chicken breasts, you can do that too. Now, moving on to the noodle portion of this stir fry. If you haven't seen me use this on my channel before, shirataki noodles are the best low carb, low cal noodle substitute ever. But they come in a lot of water. So drain the water. And then take a nonstick pan that I'm preheating over medium heat and put the noodles directly in there. So what that's gonna do is cook out the excess moisture because they're packed in a ton of water, as you can see. And if I don't cook out the remaining moisture, it's gonna make my stir fry or whatever you put it in very soggy. So that'll do its thing for five minutes. The chicken will take a total of five minutes and then we'll get going on the rest of the stir fry. Let's give the chicken a flip, beautiful. Golden brown and crusty, exactly what I wanna see. Let's check on the noodles back there. Nice, see all that moisture evaporating? Exactly what I wanna see. Time to get the chicken out of the pan. All right, last chicken is out of the pan. And guys, the spice rub smells amazing. And part of the reason why the crust looks so darn good is that trivia question I asked earlier. So I'm gonna push these to the side. <laughs> we are rocking a lot of pans today. But for the stir fry, I have a nonstick pan. I was preheating it over medium high heat back there with a shot of avocado oil. You could have cooked the chicken in the nonstick pan and then cooked the stir fry in there too, but I love the crust that the uh, cast iron makes. So for the stir fry, we're gonna add a half a red bell pepper that's sliced, half an onion that's been chopped. And then I just chopped up about a cup of the green beans. But do yourself a favor, buy the French green beans called the Harry Covert. The ends are chopped off already. It just makes the cooking that much quicker. All right, pop this guy over medium high heat. Give it a little shimmy. After five minutes, I'm gonna add two cloves of garlic that are finely minced. Give that a mix up. And now my friends, it's time for my favorite part of a stir fry, soft scrambled eggs. I have two eggs here. I'm just gonna beat them up really well and then create a little bit of a well in the pan here and tip them in and just stir it really well. A soft scrambled egg in a stir fry to me is just so rich and luxurious, adds a little more protein and it's so darn good. Then give it a nice shake. Oh, man overboard. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go back to the stove yonder and get my shirataki noodles that have kind of 
given up all their moisture. See how they shrink a little bit? George Costanza like shrinkage is a good thing sometimes. Then tip them into the pan. And then I still have the heat on medium high. Stir fries go fast and furious. And then to finish this real quick, I have my holy trinity of Asian sauces that is always in my pantry. Spicy sriracha sauce, nutty sesame oil, and amino acids or low sodium soy sauce. I'm gonna tip in the amino acids for salt. Start with about a tablespoon, half a teaspoon of the toasted sesame oil. Depending on how spicy you want it, I'm gonna go about a teaspoon of sriracha. Oh, and then as soon as it hits the heat, it smells like an Asian stir fry restaurant. In this kitchen, give it a couple shakes so the noodles and veggies get coated in that sauce. And then I'm gonna grab the chicken thighs that we just grilled and slice them up and toss them in the pan. So look at this, when I cut the chicken, it's crazy juicy. Look at those chicken thighs. The juice is just dripping out of them. And then add them to the pan. Give them one last stir. Soaks up all those pan juices, everything comes together. Let's kill the heat on the pan and then scoop a nice big scoop into a bowl. Top it off with some of the sliced chicken. And there it is, you guys. Quick and easy, low carb, noodle, veggie, and chicken stir fry. There is so much flavor in this chicken here. It's juicy, the spice rub is banging. Those noodles have all the flavors of the stir fry. The veggies are popping. You honestly can't even tell that it's low carb shirataki noodles. This is a great sub for starchy, caloric noodles. All right, this is done. Let's move on to the next dish. For recipe number two, let's get going on the veggie and egg frittata. I'm gonna put down my brand new white nonstick pan over medium heat, and I'm gonna drizzle in two teaspoons of olive oil. Olive oil this time because I want that flavor. Whereas for the stir fry, I did avocado oil because it has no flavor. Now I'm gonna add some red peppers that are chopped, some onions that are chopped, a quarter pinch of salt, and a few cracks of black pepper. Give it a mix up. So a frittata is just a fancy way of saying omelette. But everything in Italian sounds better than American. Omelette, meh. Frittata, yeah. So in this bowl. In American or in English? In, <laughs> in American, in English. So in this bowl, I have four eggs. The key to making a very light and fluffy frittata or omelet or scrambled eggs is beating a lot of air into the eggs. All right, now that the onions and red peppers have cooked down just a bit, I'm gonna take kale that I finely chopped and just add a small handful. And kale is just like spinach. Once it cooks, it'll wilt down to almost nothing. Once the veggies have cooked down and look like this, turn the heat down to medium low and then add the eggs. I touched the pan, it was hot. And then use a rubber spatula to stir everything really well. And then I wanna cook it for just a minute on the stove top until the egg starts to set just a little bit. And then I'll finish it in my oven that is preheating at 400 degrees right now. It's almost the colors of the Italian flag also. All right, so that looks good. See how it's semi-formed right there? Give it one last shake, smooth it out like that. No, they're not, stop it. I don't need you to do my peppers. I'll do my own peppers. And I'm gonna transfer this to the oven for about seven to eight minutes. All right, it's been about seven minutes. The frittata is set. All you have to do is push down in the middle. If it's firm and not soft, it's ready to go. So take a spatula and just go all the way around the edges of the pan, and then it slides right out. And then take a knife and just cut it up. And this is my favorite part. Look at the cross section. You see all those beautiful veggies, that green kale. It's soft and custardy and perfect for brekkie. And there it is, you guys, a quick and easy veggie and kale frittata. Enough for one hungry Bobby, or this could last for two breakfasts. Gonna eat this like pizza pie. You guys, it's all about that soft custardy egg. The veggies still have a bite. That kale is nice and hearty, and it's seasoned perfectly. All right, that is done. Before we move on to number three, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe because we are rocking the best meal prepping videos on YouTube every Friday, and I'd love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, next up, we're doing low carb, low calorie pesto pasta. All right, for the pesto pasta, I'm making my pesto sauce out of kale because it's way cheaper than basil and it's much more versatile, but I have to boil it first. It's too hearty of a green to use raw like basil, so I have a little pot of water at a boil here. Just like I would cook pasta, I'm gonna season it with a nice pinch of salt and then drop about a cup of packed kale right in. Okay, I'm gonna boil that for one minute. And just like earlier, to make this low carb, we're using the shirataki noodles again. 
because it's a great pasta supplement. If you haven't found these or haven't used these yet, get them at uh, Whole Foods or Walmart. They're actually pretty inexpensive. But we have to cook the moisture out once again because they're loaded with water. That'll make our pesto pasta very waterlogged. So dump it into a nonstick pan that's preheated over medium heat. And then I'm just gonna put it on the back here for a few minutes. And then we can get going on the rest of our pesto ingredients here. I have my small food process here, which is perfect for making sauces and pestos. Let's add a couple cloves of garlic that are finely minced, a couple tablespoons of walnuts, a tablespoon of fresh parsley, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of black pepper, and then kill the heat on the pot. Just roughly drain the kale from the water. It's okay that it's hot. And place it into the chopper. So what do you guys think? Desi just said to me that walnuts are the 11th ingredient, but I told her walnuts are not fresh. They will last in your fridge or freezer or pantry for a good six months to a year. Okay, kale is in. I'm gonna slap the lid on the chopper here. And just blend it up. Now take a peek in there. Really fresh, really vibrant. Now what it needs to come together as a pesto is some really good extra virgin olive oil. I'm talking like top shelf stuff. So let's start by adding two to three tablespoons in here and then blending up some more. Perfect, look at the consistency and the color of this pesto, you guys. Now I'm using this olive oil from the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. Every quarter they send you some of the best extra virgin olive oil from around the world to your door. They have a promo code they gave me for $1 for your first bottle. So I'll put that down in the link if you guys wanna try it out. All right, let's push this to the side. All right, the noodles are nice and evaporated. Now what I like to do with these is pour them onto a board and then just run your knife through it a couple times. They tend to tangle together and you don't want that. And then put them in a bowl. And then it's nice to do this while it's hot. That way the pesto really gets absorbed into the noodles. Just spoon over enough of the pesto to thoroughly coat. And just mix it up really well. And to serve the pasta, let's scoop it into a bowl and then top it off with some sliced chicken. And there it is, you guys. Low carb, low calorie pesto pasta with spice rubbed chicken thighs. I'm going in for a bite, just like pasta. Noodles are banging, but that pesto is fresh, vibrant, creamy. All right, this is done. Let's move on to the lunch salad. If you follow me on the Flav City Instagram, you'll see on stories, I eat the same lunch salad almost every day. So I thought I would share it with you. In the bowl, I have a good three cups of chopped kale. To that, I'm gonna add some diced red peppers and some sliced tomatoes. For some sweetness, I'm gonna shake in some raisins. To get some crunch in there, shake in one tablespoon of roasted walnuts. And then for the dressing, I keep it super simple at lunch. Once again, I reach for that really good extra virgin olive oil and drizzle in about a tablespoon and a half. Crack in a little bit of Himalayan pink salt. I really like this kind of salt. A few cracks of black pepper. And then you can use lemon juice, but I love rice wine vinegar. It's not very acidic. It's a really mild vinegar and it makes a great flavor for the dressing. So shake in about a teaspoon and chop up some chicken. Add that to the bowl and then give it a good mix. I call this my big dog bowl because I stand in front of my computer and I just eat it out of the bowl. I normally add avocado, maybe some cashews and pistachios, but I'm limited because of the 10 fresh ingredients. But really it's a garbage salad. Anything you want, toss in here and you can prep this ahead of time. Don't dress it till the morning of. It will last until lunch because kale is very hearty and it won't get wilted. All right, let's plate this up just in case you don't like my dog bowl presentation. It's just super quick, really easy, and full of flavor and texture. The fifth and final dish is shakshuka. It's basically a Middle Eastern, North African egg and tomato casserole that you bake in the oven. So to rock that, I'm preheating an eight inch skillet over medium high heat. This is probably the six skillet I've used and just off of the camera right here, there is a mountain of dishes, but you know what? It's worth it because I love you guys. Let's put two teaspoons of olive oil into the pan and then go in with some onions that are chopped, some sliced red bell peppers, and a clove of garlic that I minced. And then let's also pinch in a quarter teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of black pepper. This is a really cool dish because it can be a breakfast, it can be a brunch, it can be a dinner, a late night snack. Now, we have to throw some tomatoes in there, so let's, let's dirty up another food processor, right? We already got a mountain, let's just make a ginormous Mount Fuji mountain. So. I'm gonna take some of those tomatoes that I use for my lunch salad. I have them, I'm just gonna plop them in the food processor and chop them up. Okay. So instead of buying like a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes, I pretty much just made my own. Perfect. 
Veggies are cooking down nicely. Now I wanna utilize my 10 ingredients even more. So I'm gonna take a handful of kale and just add that to the pan. If you're not a hipster yet, by the time you make all five of these recipes with all this kale, you will be one. <laughs> so mix that up. I wanna cook it for two more minutes so that kale wilts down. Let's add the tomatoes to the pan. And then remember, the tomatoes are bland, so we have to season that too. Let's pinch in another quarter teaspoon of salt and a couple cracks of black pepper. How many times in this video have I said a quarter teaspoon of salt and a couple cracks of black pepper? Like a broken record today. All right, mix that up and then simmer it over medium heat for about four minutes just so it reduces and gets a little thicker. By the way, you guys, the macros and nutritional info is down below in the description box for all five of these recipes. Now check that out, you guys. The tomatoes are reducing nicely, but tomatoes are really acidic. So to balance that, I'm gonna squirt in a little bit of agave nectar. You could also use honey. So like one teaspoon should do the trick. We're gonna add the eggs, but first take a spoon, make a couple dimple marks for the eggs to kind of sit in, and then carefully lower the egg into the dimple. Season the egg with another, another pinch of salt and a crack of black pepper. And then my oven is preheating at 450 Fahrenheit and pop it in the oven for six to eight minutes. All right, you guys, took about eight minutes. And as soon as the yolk sets, I pull it out. Everything has reduced. Now, admittedly, I did mean to put some green beans in the saute mixture, but I had a brain fart, okay? This is like three and a half hours into filming videos. So I put my Iron Chef hat on and I took a few of the green beans or Harry Cover, sliced them super thin, Trust them with extra virgin olive oil, salt, pepper, and rice wine vinegar. And I'll just scatter them on top for a little bit of crunch. Because we do need a little bit of texture in there, so I think that's kind of cool. And let's garnish with some fresh parsley. It's so satisfying. It's like healthy, clean comfort food, but egg yolk is slightly runny. Tomatoes have reduced the sweetness from the red peppers. That is awesome. There it is, you guys, five epic different meal prep recipes for the entire week using 10 fresh ingredients. Easy, healthy, full in flavor, like we always do up on this channel. So hook us up, show us the love, subscribe to our channel. Share this video with all your friends and your family because we are rocking out some serious meal prep every Friday morning. All the recipes, storage, reheating, macros, nutritional are down below in the description box. If you wanna see two more pretty epic meal prep recipes, they're streaming below me right now, but I'll see you next week. And I'll say unto you, like I always do, hashtag keep on cooking. Peace out, mad love.